this video introduces the Year 7 Scratch Game Design Unit. What we will have a look at doing over the, the next few weeks um, is a quick look at a few games that have been made over the last 35 years um, and try and understand you know, what makes a game popular uh, and what makes it uh, unpopular. And most importantly, we'll be looking at programming um, different elements of gameplay. So how we can program movement, how we can program level progression, scoring, and so on. Now, in today's lesson, like I said, we'll take a very quick look at uh, similarities and differences between various games over the last 35 years. And we'll have a look to see what games are uh, most popular and why that might be. And then we'll spend uh, some real good quality time uh, looking at how to program different types of movement in Scratch. And you'll know that you would have been um, having a successful lesson if at the end of it you are able to program a, a really simple game where you can get the character moving around in different ways and also being able to explain in your own words how different uh, blocks of code for movement actually work. Now, where did it all start? Well, from 1950s to sort of 1970s, scientists who were just using computers just to do calculations uh, for scientific experiments, they started having a little think about how they can get humans interacting with computers for fun. But nothing really was produced that you could call a computer game. That was until 1971, where uh, Nolan Bushnell created Space War. Now, this was the first ever computer game that was uh, created. Uh, you were a rocket ship. You need to shoot down another ship without running out of fuel on being uh, shot down and avoiding a, a star. And then in 1972, he created the second ever computer game, which was Pong, which I'm sure you've all heard of, which is uh, a little bit of tennis, really, on the screen. You've got two paddles and a ball going between. Now, we've got loads of games nowadays. We've got action games. We've got shooter games, uh, adventure games. We've got construction and management. We've got strategy got simulations and racing games, loads and loads of different types of games. And I'm sure that you uh, or many of you uh, play computer games for fun um, in your spare time. Now, you could cla uh, classify these games um, under four main headings. You could call them core games, which a lot of those that we just saw examples of are sort of in-depth. They're visual. They're really expensive games, uh, non-serious play, um, really, really fun, often very, very expensive. Um, so, you know, they, a lot of money is spent developing those, uh, mainly because of the graphics. Uh, you can have casual games, which are often the, the ones that you might have um, online um, or little apps that you have on your phone, which are really basic, quite cheap games. They're fun, they're simple, non-serious again. You could have some serious games as well. So ones that could be in depth and visual, but um, could be fairly basic. But the point is that they're uh, quite complicated in gameplay. Uh, they try and mirror real life. So things like simulations. And then you could have educational games. Again, they could be in depth uh, in terms of uh, their visual nature, uh, could be fairly basic, but ultimately they're, they're there, not just for sort of um, non-serious gameplay, not necessarily to mirror real life, but to educate um, people about a particular topic. Now, what we're gonna have a go at doing is producing our own computer game, and it can be a game of your choice. Okay, it could be a casual game, serious game, um, even an educational game. Um, it's unlikely to be a core cool game due to the fact that it's going to be very difficult to uh, to produce high quality graphics in Scratch. Um, but ultimately, our aim is to create a computer game um, which is simple and fun to play. Now, programming movement. The first thing that we need to do is have a look at how we can program movement in Scratch. Now, here's a, an example block of code which will allow um, a character, a sprite, I should say, to move upwards when the up arrow key is pressed and to do so doing so in a, in a really smooth uh, and controlled way now there are other ways that you can program movement but sometimes they're quite jumpy um, in how they, um, they actually work uh, but this is probably the smoothest way of doing it now in terms of understanding how this block works you uh, obviously that the code would start to run when we click the green flag and then it would be forever checking to see if the up arrow key is pressed and if it is pressed, the sprite is going to point um, in direction zero, which means it's going to point upwards. And it's also then going to move in that direction. So 
only if, and it's going to constantly check if the up arrow key is pressed, it's going to point upwards and move 10 steps. If it's not, uh, if the up arrow key isn't pressed, then obviously these things aren't going to happen. So let's have a little demonstration to see how we could do that. So let's go into Scratch. We've got our cat here. Now if I go to Control, I can um, find my, sorry, events, I should say. I should find my um, hat script when the green flag is clicked. And then what I need to do is I need to um, get a forever loop and an if statement. So I'm going to be forever checking if, let's go down to sensing, forever checking if the up arrow key is pressed. If it is pressed, we want those two things to happen. We want the character to point in the up direction and we also want it to move 10 steps. Now, if I click on the green flag, if I press up, you can see that he's starting to move upwards. Let's bring him down again. Okay, so every time I press the up arrow key, up, that sprite goes. Now, that's great, we've got one direction there. Now let's just have a look to see how we could make a, s a slight tweak so that all the different directions are working. So over here, how can we program the other directions as well? Well, it's dead simple. All we need to do is right click on the, when green flag clicked is, uh, block is um, clicked, uh, and we can choose duplicate. And that will allow us to create an exact copy of that code. And if we did that four times, we could then make very, very small changes. We could say, okay, on the second one, not when the up arrow key is pressed, but when the down arrow key is pressed, we can make it point downwards in the downwards direction, 180. We could then on the third duplicated script, um, program it to move right. And then on the fourth, program it to move left. So again, if we just have a little look to see how that works, I can right click and duplicate. And I can go, okay, so when the down arrow key is pressed, let's make the cat point downwards and move 10 steps. Let's duplicate again. And we'll have a look that when the right arrow key is pressed, it's going to point to the right. And when the left arrow key is pressed, we're going to make the cat point to the left. Let's move that one over there. So now, I've got full movement all the way around, which is absolutely perfect. Okay, so I've managed to program movement using these four scripts of my main character. Now, another thing that we probably should be very aware of is how we can um, get our scri uh, sprite sorry, to uh, move automatically. That might be really useful if uh, later on we want to produce like a baddie object that we need to avo um, avoid or, or shoot down depending on um, what we're doing in our game. Now in order to program um, movement automatically it's really important to understand the coordinate system in Scratch. Now on the canvas the Scratch um, or the sprites I should say their positions are being recorded as coordinates. So if you've got a sprite that is in the dead center, their coordinate is zero along the X axis and zero down along the Y axis. So at the moment, the cat here is at position zero, zero. Now, if this cat was to move to the right hand side and be positioned over here, then its Y position would continue to be zero because it hasn't moved up or down, but its X uh, coordinate would be much higher. It'd be increased to perhaps 200, 230. 240 um, that we do need to have a, a, an awareness of that we've got this this grid this invisible grid in the background um, and we use a coordinate system to position our sprites so if we wanted to uh, get our sprite to automatically move from left to right then what we can do is we can use a glide script or two glide script really important that there's two of them in a forever loop so here, if we wanted our cat, as I said, to move to the left and to the right automatically, we could say that when the green flag is clicked, we want the cat to forever glide to X being 200, Y being zero. So the coordinate 200, zero. So that would be over here where the X value 
is 200 and the y value is zero and then and it will take one second to glide there and then we immediately have another glide script which also takes one second and this is where the object is moved over to the left hand side so where x is minus 200 and y is zero so the cat would have this sort of automatic movement left and right now in terms of how we can program that let's have a little look now in scratch so let's uh, let's very quickly get rid of these scripts just so that I can demonstrate how we can get automatic movement so again we say when the green flag is clicked we're going to forever do two motions we're going to glide to the x coordinate of 200 and y coordinate of 0 and we're then going to glide oh the cat's already gone over to the other side so you can see here that the cat is moving automatically left and right and if I wanted to slow the cat down then I would just say okay I want the cat to glide to these positions but over a much um, longer period of time so let's change one second to two seconds and you can see that the cat is moving a lot slower and again increasing that that time uh, will reduce the speed and if I wanted to increase the speed then I could just reduce the time so it's the opposite and now the cat will go really quick so that is automatic movement so the last thing that I think we should just be aware of is the fact that sometimes when you uh, start a game or when you have a, a, an object a sprite for example interacting with another element you might want that particular object uh, oh, that sprite sorry to reposition somewhere else so if you want the sprite to move to a certain location you need to set its x and y coordinates so here okay we've got a script that when we click the green flag we make the sprite move to in this case 0 minus 100 um, at the start of the game so if you want the cat to begin in the bottom left hand corner you might want to do something um, similar but obviously we've changed the x to probably minus 200 and the y to minus 200 and then the the cat would uh, start off in the game whenever you start the game in the bottom left hand corner so again that's something that we can uh, very quickly demonstrate so let's say that the cat is up here at the moment and when we start our game we always want our cat to go to a certain location what we can do is we can where is it go to here we go we can make it always go to let's say something like minus 180 minus 180 click the green flag and the cat is down the bottom left hand corner probably a little bit too low let's move him up slightly okay you get the idea so we can always make our cat go to a certain locations using this go to script very very useful script so what you've just got um, then in terms of uh, skills demonstration is you have learned how to program um, movement using the arrow keys you've been told how to um, program automatic movement of a sprite and also how to uh, reposition a sprite in a certain location